reading from Luke 22, verse 14 to 20. And it reads as follows. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said, take this and share it amongst yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it into pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given to, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice. I want to say this morning, church, that Jesus is speaking about his blood and his body with regards to the covenant that he's made with us, with regards to the power that is available to us in his blood, with regards to the symbols that we're now going to be partaking of. The scriptures tell us that, in addition to what I've read, that there's life in the blood. That there's life in the blood. So when we're partaking of our communion this morning, understand that there is symbolism of life getting into us. And so when it actually connects with us on the inside, it's becoming life. You need to believe that the life that Jesus died for, the fullness of life that he gave us, is coming inside of us. You know, in as much as it is not the physical blood, but it's life coming inside of us. Understand that this new covenant is entering us and we're being imparted with, with, with life. The blood of Christ speaks a better thing. That's the other scripture. The blood of Christ speaks a better thing. Something better. Something different. Something new. So when we're partaking of this life, we, we're partaking of this new thing. We've got to believe in our hearts that, hey, this life is coming into me. I will do this because I acknowledge who Jesus is. Je Jesus' life is represented in that. Listen to this. That, 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 that red grape juice that we're partaking of, you know, it's juice to you. And, you know, you might think, well, this is... But it symbolizes the power of heaven. It symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ. We want to remember Jesus' dedication. And as we're partaking of our communion, we want to remember his dedication to the work that the Father called him. Amen. We must remember that passion that he had to fulfilling that plan that God called him. We must look at the pain that he endured. You know, I, I was watching the Passion of the Christ a few years back. And I couldn't, you know, it was just so emotional because... Here was Jesus. His body was really pulverized and bruised and ripped apart. And it, it, it was a real account. Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ was a very close, uh, real account of what happened to Jesus. And of course, his love. Jesus was giving us his love through his blood, through the body being broken, through the blood being shed for us. And you know, oftentimes we come into worship and we say to the Father, Father, we love you. Father, we love you. How many times have we said that to the Lord? Father, we love you. God, we love you. But I want to say this. We couldn't have said that because, you know why? He first loved us. Before we can say, Father, we love you. Before we knew of him, he always loved us. So this morning, even as we partake of the elements, know that. Keep that at the forefront of your mind and your heart. You know, that he loves us. This act of love that forgives our sins. He gives us the right standing with God. So when we're partaking of communion and we, when we resolve our issues and saying, Father, we choose to repent. We choose to make right with our brother. We choose to acknowledge that there's no other name under heaven given to man by which we can be saved. We understand that, you know, Father is good. Father is a, a good God. And we should be having this communion with our families at home. We should be having communion in a home cell. We should be having communions, you know, as the believers meet wherever. So I'm encouraging you, even as we partake right now, you know, think of your homes. When last did you have communion in your homes? Call your family together and pray and read a scripture and have communion. You have the right to do so. You have the authority to do so. God's word tells us that. When last did you have communion in a zone, you know, home cell, you know? Matthew 7, 7, it gives us this power to ask then it shall be given. It gives us this power to seek and we'll find. It gives us this power to knock and the door be opened. Amen. So Jesus is that key. The blood of Christ, the body that was broken, that is that key to functioning and building God's kingdom. Amen. Come, let's pray for the elements. Let's, uh, as we pray and we receive the elements, let's all wait to be received. And then I'll pray again and we will
continue with that, all right? So, Father, thank you for the elements that represent your blood and your body that was shed for us on Calvary. Thank you, Father, for your blood. Thank you, Lord. I consecrate, I bless the elements in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, well, let us wait until we all have our communion and we'll partake together.
on, we are so grateful. We say Nara, 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 Kele, Nara, Kele, Mo. Thank you, Father. Father, in in, in, in light of the love that you showed us, what can we do, Father? What can we render, Father, to your name? You've given us everything. And so, Lord, even as we reflect on the elements that we have in our hands, Father, we want to thank you, Father, for this love. We want to thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, as we remember your love, as we remember you, Father. Father, we want to honor you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all eat and drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, worship team. So our motto for, for this year, as we all know, we've, we've been hearing this every week and every meeting, is carrying and releasing His presence, carry and release God's presence um, in every area of our lives, in every aspect. And, you know, when I prepared this word, I didn't really look at the 22 years that we were going through. But it's almost like, you know, the Father confirming that let's reflect on the 22 years with regards to how it was possible for us to, for Pastor Morgan and Pastor Val and the leadership and the church to build thus far. And uh, it was because of a solid foundation. It was because Pastor Morgan and Valencia built on that great foundation who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So this morning I'm, I'm sharing on a solid foundation. And the solid foundation word is meant to, uh, to get us to reflect on where we are. Because we may have been here for 22 years, we may have come in 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and we may have started off with a good foundation, and over time, maybe there have been some hairline cracks developing. Over time, maybe we focused on other things. And so this morning, I want us to go back to foundation and to look at what, is, what does it mean to have a solid foundation from the scripture. And I want to say this, that the church of God, which is KCF Church, is the body of Christ. It has a high calling to build God's kingdom. That is the church's calling. The, word, the, the Lord's prayer says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. That is the church's high calling. It's to establish the kingdom of the Father. Amen? In the corporate sense. And so it's important for us to understand that to do that, we have to be building on a solid foundation. To do that, we have to be strong. Otherwise, we, when we're building, we won't be able to kind of, you know, build high. We won't be able to build strong. That solid foundation is important. God's kingdom. And by His leading. Building God's church by His leading. Not by, based on what we interpret that to be, but based on what God is saying to us. For example, this year, come on, blessed to be a blessing. We are uh, in everywhere. We, we, we are... You know, carrying God's presence in everything. We all want to do great things in God's name. We all want to do great things. But we must understand that if God is not wanting us to do those things, you know, then we're doing our things. God's word tells us, listen to this, that he will give us the desires of our heart. All right? He says to us, he gives us the desires of the heart. But those desires must be what he placed in our hearts. Amen? So, in other words, the desires that you have in your hearts... Probably, and my heart, is probably what God placed there. But we must discern and ask the Father, is that the desire you placed for me? And then understand and build in that. And listen to this. Those desires must be what He placed in our hearts. 
in growing and making inroads to gaining those things that we must hold on to as foundational truths. So it's important to understand that we have to have foundations. We have to have strong foundations uh, with regards to who we are as believers and building on that. In 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11, this is what it says. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11. It says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Nobody can lay any other foundation except what we have, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. What are the signs of a strong foundation in the natural? Come on. In the natural, if you're looking at a building, what are the signs of a strong foundation? Now, if you look at the height of the building, okay, the higher the building, you know that stronger the foundation. So you've got to understand that, you know, this foundation's got to be strong. You know, I was thinking of some of the RDP houses that years back that was built, you know, a room and a kitchen. And, and, and years after that it was built, well, two, three years after, the houses, you know, where the, where the doorway was uh, to the back was like showing huge cracks and huge, uh, you know, uh, defaults on, on, in the workmanship because the foundation was not solid. It did not have a strong foundation. It did not have a strong foundation. Therefore, the building could not stand. You know, it was just starting to crumble. And as believers, I'm inviting us to reflect on where we're at with regards to our foundation, to reflect on where we are going and, and what is the state of our foundation. Do we need to repair the foundation? Do we need to rebuild our foundation? Do we need to fix it? Or do we need to break it up and put a new foundation? And this morning, I want to share, uh, years back, you know, the Lord called me, uh, well, he showed me in a, in, in a vision, and uh, there were three heavenly beings building a glorious, glorious building. They were building this so meticulously that the bricks were laid accurately. The, the line of that bricks was so plumb that you couldn't tell the difference of one brick. They were all in place, all placed one upon the other. And I was watching these three heavenly entity, uh, beings build. And the next part of that vision was this. I am now the fourth person building with them building this glorious building, building this glorious building. Of course, its foundation was Jesus Christ. And then the third part of it, which involved me, but it also involves you. They were out, and I was in by myself. Now, and they, three of them say to me, carry on building the church. And I'm saying to you this morning, even as my message is called a solid foundation, that God is saying to us this morning, carry on building the church on the solid foundation who is Jesus Christ, carrying on building the kingdom of God, carrying on teaching, carrying on impacting, carry on encouraging with having a firm foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and it's so important to build on that firm foundation because if you're not building on that firm foundation, when the baton is handed over to your, whoever you're handing over, when, that, when you're empowering somebody else teaching, when you are impacting somebody else wherever you find yourselves, that foundation must be solid. Otherwise, there's going to be inferior standards being passed out. We're not having the solid foundation. Therefore, this building that you're building, that God has called you to build, will be like the RDP houses. It'll have cracks in the walls. It won't have a solid foundation. God is calling us this morning, and he's saying to us, in our foundation of faith, we've got to have strong foundations. So let's just look at some things where we can, in our foundation of faith, look at what we need to understand as foundational truths to having a solid foundation. All right? So what we need to understand now, there's so many of them, and I won't have time to go all, through all of them, but I looked at the core important ones that we need to have and remember them again. You might say, well, I know that. You know that. Do you believe that? Knowing something here and believing something as a life value is two different things. To, you know, and so it's so important not just to know it, but to have it ingrained as a life value in you. So here goes. Number one, you've got to know in your foundation that Jesus was the Son of God. You know, a lot of people believe, yes, he was the Son of God, but you know what? I'm not sure if he had a virgin birth. Son of God, and you know, the angel said to Mary and to Joseph, and, and you know, um, uh, 
that, that you will ha- you'll be, you know, having a child and he is the son of God. In fact, when the demons were cast out, you know, they, they were talking to Jesus and saying, you know, son of, uh, you know, uh, uh, God, you know, son of David, son of God, have mercy on us. You know, calling him the son of God. The demons knew that he was the son of God. How much more do we need to know, understand, and have this mindset that he is the son of God, the son of the most high God. In our foundation, we need to know that he is the son of God. He watches over us. He takes care of us. He died for us. This morning we had communion and those elements represent his blood that was shed. He died for us and, and you know, he gave us his life. He finished the, the, his race. He finished everything. Every little I was dotted and every T was crossed with regards to his mandate. We need to be like the son of God as, as part of our foundation. The next one. Born of a virgin birth. I mean, how do you understand that? Do you, you hear that Jesus came and was, had a virgin birth? You hear that. How do you believe that? Do you believe that? Or do you doubt that? Come on, let's look at that. You've, you've been to school. You've, you've got this understanding of what happens in life. How is that possible? And you doubt and somebody else who's some, you know, really will, will say something with regards to, uh, you know, something contrary to that. Sorry. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, and uh, so, and we believe that. We believe their flow of, 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 of uh, their interpretation. And so, here we are, you know, come on, how can this happen? You need to have that in your foundation. You need to have that in your understanding. You need to believe that, that Jesus was, ha- had a virgin birth. He was born of a virgin. The other one is the prayer. Do you have prayer as part of your foundation? You know that prayer must be part of your foundation. You know that you must be here during pre-service prayer meeting. You know that you must pray in home cell. You know that you must pray in your homes, have a family altar. Do you pray? James 5, 16, what does it say? The, the prayers of the righteous avails much. The prayer of the righteous. The prayer of the For us to be called righteous men, we need to have a foundation understanding what righteousness means. Understanding that righteous people pray. Righteous people don't just beg God, don't just go to God when there's a need. We pray because we love God. We pray because God loved us even before that. He first loved us, all right? So we pray as a foundation. Prayer must be a foundation. It mustn't be a case where the intercessors are praying and covering us only. It must be a thing where we're reading the word of God. The word of God. The word became flesh and dealt amongst men. Dwelt amongst us. The word became flesh and led by example. Come on. We need to read the word. We need to understand the word. And not just understand certain things and complain when you feel the word is saying that. And he said that and all of that. Understand the fullness of God's word. Study God's word. Have that ingrained in the foundation of our faith. Because God's word is important. What about works? Works is the next aspect of our foundation. With regards to building on Jesus. Because when we know Jesus, when we uh, love the Lord Jesus Christ, we understand what the scripture says that without works, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. So there's nothing in the foundation. There's no works. There's nothing happening. What is the state of that foundation if we're not doing any works? And if it's not built on Jesus Christ? Okay. Communion. We just had communion now. Part of our foundation is having communion. Announcing the Lord's death. Announcing his death. Basically saying, Lord, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your body that was broken for us. We thank you for your your blood that was shed for us. We thank you, Lord, that you're a good God. We're announcing, you know... Uh, his death until he returns. We thank you also for, what about baptism? Baptism is not salvation. Baptism does not save you. But in baptism, as part of your foundation, you are saying, Lord, I acknowledge, I understand that you died for me. I understand that you were buried. I understand that you rose again. So baptism talks about three aspects, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. If you are not baptized this morning, I encourage you. To get involved in your home cell, ask your home cell leader to assist you, to baptize you. Get involved, be baptized. Saved by grace. You know, we, so we work so effortlessly. Tired, we, you know, we really put everything in our work. You know, almost believing that sometimes that our work gives us salvation. We are saved by grace. We are saved by his love. 
We are saved by his, come on, his goodness. We are saved by God's free, you know, love for us. He's freely he gave to us. Not by any one of our works, not by any one of our human efforts, but we are called to have works. We are called to have these human efforts. So in our, in our foundation, we have to have all these things. Come on, understand who Jesus Christ is, the Son of God. Understand that he was born of a virgin birth. Pray, pray, pray. Understand what prayer means. Pray as in a prayer, you know, with each other. Pray in your families, pray in yourselves. Works, in, get involved with doing works. Have an, a healthy understanding of what the blood of Christ represents. Hel have a healthy understanding of what happened at the cross. Have a healthy understanding of what the word represents. What the word of God tells us. Baptism, understanding what baptism is. All right. Listen to this. If you are struggling to get going, reflect on the basics and make correction if need be. It's so important that sometimes in life you might think, Father, I'm so tired of this happening in my life. I'm so tired of being blessed financially, but in another area of my life I'm blocked. I'm so tired that I'm struggling in relationships or whatever it is you're struggling. I'm so tired because I'm struggling with my marriage. But some areas of your life you're having such great victory, and in the other areas you're not. Could it be that some of the foundational truths are missing in your life? Could it be that you know of these truths that I've mentioned because you've heard it from the time you became a Christian, but could it be that it might be missing, one or two of them, or maybe you understand what the scriptures say, but you have not got it in your life, you know, it's not functioning and proving itself. It's not revealing itself. And so we need to get back to the word of God and say, Father, I understand. I really believe that, you know what, regardless of what the people, the, the, the people who speak against your word, the people that dis, you know, discuss you behind closed doors and say, how can this be? You know, a lot of other faiths will tell you they believe that he was a prophet, but how can he be the son of God? Who's, who was God's wife? They'll ask you questions like that. You know, we need to believe, we need to have this unwavering faith that Jesus is the son of God. Right, let's just look at this. Deuteronomy 11.24, it says this, Wherever, come on, put it up there, please. Wherever you set your foot, that the land will be yours. Listen to this. Your frontiers will stretch from the wilderness in the south to Lebanon in the north, and from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. So, in other words, every place that you set your feet, that God has said you can have, will be yours when you have the right foundations. When you have the right foundations. Because if you're not believing, the right foundations, if you're not believing the right stuff, your foundation's going to have those hairline cracks. And then you're going to have successes in some areas and possibly not in other areas. So it's important to know this. Wherever, wherever God said you place your feet, wherever is wherever, anywhere that he's called you to function, in your assignment, where he's called you to set your feet, he's given that for the taking. If you are struggling in an area that God has called you to take a, you know, ground in, could it be that the foundation's got hairline cracks? Could it possibly be that God called you to have success in a certain area and you blocked and now you want to give up and say, ah, maybe this is our lot in life that we meant by God possibly not to have that. In the meanwhile, God has said, come on, every place that you set your feet, I have given unto you. Look within. Look inside your foundation. What is your foundation like? What are the areas in your foundation that needs to be fixed? What are the areas in your foundation that needs to maybe need to be broken and you know, reapplied? What are the areas? Let's look at Matthew 16, verse 17 to 18. Matthew 16, 17 to 18, 18 says this. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of Jonah, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you, you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. But listen to the previous verses or the verses prior to 17. It says this. Listen to this. It says this. Who do men say I am? Jesus is asking to them. Verse 14, 15. Right? Jesus is asking his disciples. He's speaking to his disciples. I, wanna, I want you to hear this. He's saying to them, who do men in the community, in the town, say I am? And they were saying, some say you are some great prophet. Some say you are 
this person. Some say you are that person. So Jesus comes to them and says to them, well, they are saying that about me. Who do you say I am? As children of the Most High God, people who have a foundational understanding of who Jesus is, we need to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is in our lives. We can't be answering like those people and saying, oh, maybe he's a prophet. Maybe he is this great person. We need to understand, like Peter said, Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the Most High God. And that understanding and that knowledge and that revelation must come from having a strong foundation. Not just lip service, knowing knowledge, saying, well, oh yeah, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is this. We must know Him based on our understanding, based on our experiences with Him, as we apply God's Word, as we know, you know, through our faith. When we go through the challenges, the storms of life hit you, come on, when the storms of life, we must know that there's a strong foundation. We must know this. Listen, through, we must understand this, that building His church, you know, building, building His church by our Holy Spirit-led works. We've got to build His church by our Holy Spirit-led works. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the vehicle to get, you know, the, the Word of God into the community, to get the Word of God into us and then through us to the people. You know, through biblical truths, the people who have received certificates, listen to this, they were in training for 40, 40 hours. It feels like 40 years. But they were in training for 40 hours. Those guys that have received their certificates, they had 40 hours of training in our church. So they were, they were like, you know, all these courses, commitment, dedication, briani, you know, all the guys training. Listen, you know, all of that. And, and the worship guys, they were all here. And we thank God for our worship team, eh? In all of that, you know, we celebrate seven years and 14 years and all the, all the, you know, the certificates. But these guys were also here together with all of us training and their commitment must be also be recognized. So we thank you guys for your commitment, guys, of worship team. You know, the people that received, you know, to be like Simon, we knew Jesus who was like him. Unlike the others who said, like in verse 16, like I said to him, listen, you're a great teacher. You know, you're a healer. You're a prophet. But we need to know him as Lord and Savior. Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27. Read this. Listen to this. Though the rain comes in torrents... And in flood water, and the flood waters rise, and the winds beat against that house. It won't collapse. Hello, guys. When your foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ, when you know those truths that I discover, uh, covered just now, and more, when you know this, when the flood waters come and rise, and the winds beat against your house or that house is talking about, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. It is built on a firm foundation. Verse 26, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it, hello, in other words, anyone who does not have a firm foundation, anyone who does not have me as their foundation, have the Lord Jesus Christ, he's like a person who builds a house on the sand, and when the rains and floods come, and the wind beats against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Come on, what about the storms of life? When the storms of life hit you, Whatever in area of your life, and, and there's so many areas that I can look at, you know, so many areas, storms of life, you know, they just batter you with storms. Do you have a strong faith? Do you have a strong faith? Let me just say this. When you're going through ch stuff, it is the natural thing to, to complain or to be sorry about it or, or have a challenge or speak to somebody about it. But in speaking to people, do not speak negatively against your situation. In speaking to people regarding your storms, don't disqualify yourself from that which God has blessed you in. In speaking about it, do not be the one that creates the opposite of what God wants you to have. Because your speech creates. Do not speak against that. So when the storms of life hit you, do not say that, you know, I don't know what's happening here. I wish I can do this. I must change this and I must move here and I must move there and, you know, move, whatever. Stay. Develop the strong faith. Fix the foundation. You know, and stand. Don't be like this house. When the flood waters rise and the winds beat against this house, it, you know, be like that house that it won't collapse. But don't be like that house that does, doesn't have that foundation. Don't be like that house that is just, you know, pushed around by everything. Stay. Stand. Be committed. 
The one thing that I want to say this in 22 years, and Pastor Morgan says this, he, he'll say this better than I do ever, is this that they went through challenges. As a church, we've been through challenges. As a church, we've been through a number of situations, scenarios where we felt, oh God, we can't handle this. What now? What next? You know, problems with all the various things, and, and I don't, don't want to go into all that. I want to build faith this morning. And yet, after 22 years, what God planted, what God spoke is now growing and developing even more. So I pray, I, I bless KCF Church for the next 22 years, you know, and I pray that, you know, as the, the people that come into this church, uh, pastors and leaders and members like us, that they will also be faithful and also build on that foundation that we built, Pastor Morgan built. Amen. Yeah, so st the storms of life, come on, you need to be strong. When you experience loss or don't have breakthrough, you're saying, Father, this fast that's coming up in August, I'm trusting you for this. Two, three, four. All those points that you're trusting the Lord for. So what happens when you don't have breakthrough? Do you quit? Do you stop believing? Those are the right answers. But what is the actual thing that happens? You know, you, do you quit? You say no. But what happens in us? What happens? You know, do you quit believing? And then maybe you'll say, well, this is my lot in life. This is my lot in life. You know, I've fasted. I've prayed. I know that the scripture says this. I know that the promise of, from God's word said, you know, thus saith the Lord, you will be whatever, your job, your business, your family, your children, whatever it is, whatever it is. God's given you that word. He's given you that reassurance. But because there's no evidence, there's evidence to the contrary, and now you're thinking after fasting and after praying, you know, uh, I was speaking to somebody the other day, and they were saying, you know what, they're not in, uh, in a setting, in a Christian setting anymore, because for 25 years, they've been denied in a certain area. How do you quit on the Lord? It's like quitting on your faith. You, you can't quit on the Lord. You know, we need Him. We need the Lord Jesus Christ to move forward. We need the Father to do things. You might, you might be experiencing a lack in a certain area. It's not turning like it needs to turn. You know, the Lord has given me five areas in my life. Listen to this. Uh, on the 4th, well, on, the, on Thursday, on the 4th of July. <laughs> right? He gave me five areas that he's going to restore. Five areas. Now, that has to do with me. All right? The areas, those five areas I was attacked in in the past 12 years. 12 years! you going through your scenario for the past two months and you want to quit. And you want to throw in the towel. And you want to change course. And you want to shift God's plan for your life. God's purposes for your life will materialize. But don't expect to be blessed when you're outside of his will. Stay the course. Stay where God placed, planted you. So those five areas in my life, I'm trusting the Lord now for progressive restoration. Now I know that it was difficult. I know that it om I almost failed. In fact, in some areas, I hit the ground. I know that, you know, it was difficult. Financial pressure. Pressure in the family. Pressure with regards to health. Pressure with regards to all areas. Real scenarios that caused me to buckle. Real scenarios that caused me to almost quit on the Lord even. But I stand here to tell you this, that I did not quit. I persevered. I went on. And I'm saying this to you as well. Do not quit. Do not make a plan. Trust the Lord. When I, when I say do not make a plan, don't go, you know, when you have a financial problem, people want to go to the bank and take a loan to solve another lo a problem. You can't do that. Just, just focus on solving it. Ask the Lord for wisdom. Ask the Lord for a strategy to come out of where you're at. And if you are there, ask the Lord for a word. Come on. Thy word is a... To my feet. So what is the word of God saying to you? Quit. Or stay. Or trust me. Do you believe the Lord, His report, or are you believing the report of your circumstances? Because in your circumstances, God is teaching you valuable lessons. And if you don't the le learn the lessons, what happens to those lessons? The lessons get repeated. And every time the lesson gets repeated, the lesson gets? There you go. Come on, so learn the lesson now. Find that foundation. Fix that foundation. F fix it, you know. I wanted to quit a number of times, but I thank God I didn't. And I praise God for that. Proverbs 24, verse 16. 
Listen to this. The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up. The other translation says this. A righteous man, though he falls seven times, he will get up. All right? This is the New Living Translation. But it says this. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Are you classified as the wicked? Where one little disaster is going to overthrow you and get you to quit? Or are you going to fall as a righteous man, righteous woman, and get up? Because a righteous man has a firm foundation, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The righteous man knows the Lord Jesus Christ. He has Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus in his foundation. He knows the word. He knows how to pray. He knows how to fellowship. He knows how to fast. He knows how to believe. He knows how to trust in the midst of the storms. The, that's why the scripture says, the godly may fall trip seven times, but they will get up again. So listen, righteous man that has fallen, righteous woman that has fallen, I say to you, get up. In Jesus' name. Get up. Don't, don't let your face lie on the ground and cry like you're the wicked to be overthrown. You are not part of that wicked kingdom. You are part of God's kingdom. So get up. Dust yourself up. Refresh yourself. Come on. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And stand again. There are many people that I'm looking at here and, and I know of outside here that have gone through such scenarios, gone through near loss of jobs, gone through near marriages collapsing, gone through near businesses. I'm one of them in all those areas. Children, I'm one of them. But we're standing because our foundation is Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. We're standing and we're persevering and saying, my father, amen. So you as well, whatever you're going through, whatever it is, your finances, your relationships, you know, sometimes it's so easy to go into, I'm not talking about me, I'm, I'm generalizing. It is go, go into one relationship after another, after another, after, as a single person. And you're thinking, you know what, maybe, maybe, maybe God's plan is here. Maybe God's plan is here. And you do that, and then in the meanwhile, you create a reputation for yourself. And so understand this, God loves you dearly, regardless of what you've gone through. As a righteous person, come on, get up, dust yourself up. Listen to this. The righteous man is the one who has Jesus as his foundation, not Jesus and the gods of his ancestors. Hello. I, when I was preparing, the Lord said to me, speak that. We don't have Jesus and my ancestors in the foundation. They cannot be a part of one denomination. You cannot have Jesus and. It's either Jesus or. You know, you can't have Jesus and say, well, you know, on a Sunday I go to church, but when it's time to do my ancestral thing, I'll do my ancestral things. Whose report will you believe? Which God were you serving? Come on. Amen. We need to serve Jesus only. No. Amen. Converts in the church must become disciples. We must become disciples. We've, got, we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor him. But we must, we must become disciples. And I was so blessed to see the, the last group, you know, all the groups, the seven year, the 14 year, and the, the, the champion certificates. But the champions, guys, it's like, you've done all the courses. You know, you've done everything. So they're no more like converts as new disciples. They are now disciples of the Most High God who are able to minister God's word, who are able to teach what John 3.16, as Auntie Sarah, you know, helps them through that course. They, they finish the equipping track. Listen to this. Understand this, that we are here on assignment and purpose. We are here on assignment and purpose. You are here for God's purpose. You are here on God's assignment. Do not think that you can get home and do what you need to do. Do not think that you can do what you want to do. Yes, enjoy your life. Yes, love people. Enjoy your families. Yes, go and, you know, have fun and all of that. But understand that you are primarily placed on the earth for God's divine purpose and nothing else. When you leave here, you are going to be asked. Your works are going to be tested with fire. Is it going to be burnt up? Because you built in the flesh? Or is it, because, you know, is it going to be strong and solid because you built on Jesus Christ? What are you building this morning, church? What are you building? Are you building on your firm foundation? Are you building on Jesus Christ? Are, do you know what your assignment is in life? Do you know what your purpose is on the earth that God called you to do? 
Do you need to be awakened to serve in the ministry? What is the area of ministry that you're serving in, in, your, in your local church? Why aren't you serving? If I was Jesus and I was saying to you, for example, Lumbani, why aren't you serving? If he wasn't serving, he's serving. What are you going to say to the Lord Jesus Christ? What are you going to say to him? I am waiting for what? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You're waiting to be called. You are being called now. You have been called in the past. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for your business to turn. Come on, I know of people like myself, and, and I was speaking to a number of people in the church who have gone through such challenges, and yet we still love the Lord. We still serve the Lord because, listen, that same God that blessed us in the past is going to bless us tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Because we believe that, that He is... I'm feeling that anointing. I want to pray for businesses. I just feel such an anointing in business. Just now. Okay, not now. I don't know what you're trusting the Lord for. I don't know what you're trusting the Lord for. But I do know this. Have you put your hands to the plow and turned back? Have you put your hands to the plow and complained, complained, complained? Come on. You are answerable to the Lord. I am just his mouthpiece. I'm simply his mouthpiece. So come, let's just close our eyes this morning. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are calling us to a firm foundation. You are that firm foundation, Jesus. There is no other foundation except you. And so, Father, thank you for those examples of great faith, the examples that we have in the Word that speak about men of great faith, Father, in Hebrews and in all the, the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation. I thank you, my God, for the folk that have come into your house this morning for the first time. I thank you for those that are watching online. Father, this was a very basic, basic word. But I thank you, my God, that you are telling us this morning that if our foundations are not right, we cannot build, Father, properly. We cannot have buildings that are strong. We cannot have buildings that are firm. We cannot have buildings that go high up. Thank you, Father, this morning. Your word is saying that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail. But, Father, that church must be built on a strong foundation. It is your kingdom. It is your people this morning, Lord. Father, you know your people, where they're at, where they need to reassess, where they need to introspect and fix and come before you and say, Lord, I'm sorry for not believing you. I'm sorry for not trusting you. Father, I bring them before you right now, Lord. All the areas of the life, everyone in your house this morning, I bring them before you. You know their name. You know, Father, when they quit on believing you for a certain area with regards to breakthrough, with regards to answered prayer. You know that, Father, it is so easy to, that they threw in the towel and said, well, I'll make, this is plan B. And plan B was not a part of your plan for them. It was their plan, their, their desire. Father, let them become reset this morning in their ways. Let them reset themselves in you because you laid down your life for them. You gave them, Father, a newness. You forgave them, Father. You died for them. You loved them before they were formed. You, Father, set them apart on the earth for a purpose. But this morning, I thank you, Lord, for these folk. I thank you, Father, for the folk in this morning. So, like I said, I want to pray for businesses. I feel that. I feel that. You know, the scripture says that I just read now, the righteous, even though they fall seven times, is going to get up. The righteous is going to get up. I also believe that some of you need to return to the Lord because the foundation is just so messed up. You know, you, you, you're all over. And I don't want you to look at your neighbors, please. I don't want you to look at who's coming here because this is between you individually and the Lord. It's got nothing to do with anyone. It, it doesn't have to, anything to do with me as well. Come this morning. Father, I thank you for the folk that are struggling to respond to you, but you've already ministered to them. You've already spoken to them. You're already calling them, Father. You're already asking them, Father, to return to you. Return to you because you want to return to them, Father. Thank you this morning, Father, for a restoration, for a healing, for a fixing up, my God, areas in our lives that you're calling us to. So I don't want to do a corporate prayer because we've got a few minutes, five minutes. I want to take that time to pray for you. 
you feel that you have a need, listen, I don't want to know what your need is. It's between you and the Father. But I want to pray with you guys. I want to trust you, especially for the business folk. I really felt that anointing. Shh, you know, just like you lacked and you had and you're still going. Tomorrow is another day. Believe. Come, let's pray. If you have a need, whatever your need is, come, let's pray. Thank you, Father. Don't wait for the guy next door to you. Don't wait. If you've come yesterday, last year, come again. Come again. Trust the Lord. Remember what Malachi 3, 3 says? Remember what I said? Silver gets refined seven times in the fire. Maybe you've come six times. Maybe this is your seventh time. Silver is refined to be pure seven times in the fire. Maybe you've come last week and you said it didn't work. Well, come again. Maybe it's your second time. Maybe it's your sixth time. Maybe it's your fifth time. I don't know. Don't think that you're an embarrassment to anybody. You are not an embarrassment to God. You're not an embarrassment to God's people, to this house, the leaders of this house. We are here to love you. We are here to help you pray. We are here to get you back, restored to the Father. So don't look at people thinking, oh, I'm tired of going there and people laying hands on me. Uh, nothing's happening. Well, something's happening because you're becoming refined. You're becoming purified. You're becoming whole again. Don't quit on that which God has given you. Don't quit on that. So Father, thank you this morning. Thank you, Father. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to anoint you and then the leaders of the church are going to come and pray with me as well for you, all right? Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just bear with me for a few moments for those of you that are seated. I won't be long. I'm just going to anoint these folk in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, as I anoint them, it is the anointing of the anointer to break, Father, them free from that spirit of, Father, unbelief, where they have, Father, hairline cracks in their foundations. Father, thank you that you are restoring businesses this morning. You are restoring sons and daughters back to you. You are restoring families. You are restoring, Father, things that, Father, I don't know, even know what you are restoring, but you are restoring. They know what you are restoring, Father, this morning. And I pray, even as I anoint them, this, this anointing, Father, of strength and power and resilience and, Father, being rooted, that they will be reset in that firm foundation who is Jesus. You are that firm foundation, Father. Even as I pray right now, Father, every storm that we've gone through, that wanted to shake us and maybe did even shake us. Everyone that was screaming at us and the enemy was screaming in our ears saying, you're not worth it. You're going to fail. You're going to quit. You're not going to make it. Father, we don't believe the report of the enemy. We believe the report of the Lord. For his report says, I am free. His report says, I am healed. His report says, I have victory. His report says, I have overcome. His report says, I will make it. I will make it because the Father said so. Because you have said so. I break off every form of discouragement over these folk this morning. Everyone standing here. Every form of, Father, every weight that they're carrying. I speak to the weight and I say, be cast off. I cast you off their shoulders. That the yoke that they're feeling almost like so heavy, so weighty. I speak to you, weight. And I say to you, come off now in Jesus' name. We cast off every restraint. And I'm almost feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing this, but I'm feeling in my spirit. Some of you are like, uh, and I'm not calling you a dog, but I'm giving you this example where you got a leash. You've like controlled by something that shouldn't be controlling you. And I pray right now for that foreign control to come off you. And I say some of you are looking, look, have looked at yourself as failures in relationships. Failures in relationships. And I declare right now, even as I anoint you, that you will stop and that you'll find your partner that you'll find your friend or whoever that you'll find you know purpose in life some of you feel well what is my purpose i don't know god what have you called me on the earth well i pray that as the anointing comes upon you this morning that your eyes will be open to what you called what you're destined to in jesus name so i'm going to pray right now right i'm going to anoint you father thank you come on can i encourage those of you that are sitting there to stand this worship you've done so much for me how can I tell it all? No.
Go back to your seat thinking, well, I just, you know, stay in the Lord. Return to the Lord. Believe the Father. Resolve in your heart that today I'm turning away from how I believed. I'm turning away from, you know, how I used to live. I'm turning away and I choose to come and get involved and experience God's goodness in my life. And experience His flow in my life. I want to trust Him. When, if the, when the storms of life come and, and they try and basically sweep you off your feet, speak to your storms and say in Jesus' name, no more. Because I'm standing. I'm standing on my faith. I'm standing on my Jesus. I'm standing. I will not fail again. It will not, I will not go through another year again of the same old, same old, the same scenarios. I will trust the Lord. I will believe. I will experience that breakthrough. I will rejoice in the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be my strength. I will start to laugh again. I will not be in mourning anymore. For joy comes in the morning. For joy comes in the morning. For joy comes in the morning. I pray a refreshing upon all of you. I pray a healing upon all of you. I prophetically release this word over all of you. That you will not be down anymore you'll be like this righteous man standing up though you have fallen you will get up and dust up yourselves though you have fallen you will not crumble you will not stay down you will not become overthrown you will stand and declare the goodness of god you'll stand and testify of god's goodness you'll stand and say i am not a victim of my circumstance i am a child of the most high god i am an overcomer I am a winner. 
I am a child that is experiencing progressive grace. We bless you, Father. We praise you, Father. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your outpouring. Thank you, Lord, that you told me last night that you're going to outpour, pour out your spirit. Thank you, Father, that you're pouring out your spirit here this morning upon people that are being refreshed and healed. Lord, their lives will not be the same again. That they will not, Father, come here just for an experience. They come here for you. They've come here for your anointing. They've come here for your presence. They've come here for you, Father. They will hold on to you and run with you. They will take you, my God, into the highways. They will take you, my God, into their homes, into their schools, into their jobs, in their marketplace. They will take you, my God, and dispense of your goodness, Father, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healer of those that are backslidden. You're calling the backslidden back to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my God. Heal the backsliders, Father. Help those that are compromising, my God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your sweet spirit. It's your sweet spirit. Thank you for your presence this morning, Father. You're healing. You're setting free. You are restoring, Father. Thank you, Father. You're a good, good God. You're a God of your word. You're a faithful God. When you said you're going to pour out your spirit, Father, this is it, Father. You're pouring out your spirit upon all flesh. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Father, we love you. We thank you.